Stalked. I think it's the boyfriend. Scared. He's like stumbling around in the backyard. Who's trying to kill you? And threatened. My boyfriend's trying to stab himself and he's coming down the ground trying to stab me also. Uncovering critical failures in a system that's supposed to protect. He was shot. And how was it allowed to happen? Yes, she's out. Why didn't they take him in? Why didn't they arrest him? A failure that destroyed two lives. This was a long, repeated history of issues, signs, red flags. Tonight, a special Five on Your Side investigation. Who killed Caitlin? This could maybe help other young women who are struggling with the same kind of situation. It's a story that unfolded right here on the streets of this city, Mansfield, best known for its historic prison, featured in movies like The Shawshank Redemption. But this is a story about Caitlin Carroll Peak, kidnapped and murdered by her ex-boyfriend. It's a story five on your side. Chief Investigator Ron Regan learned could be true of countless women across Ohio, women that our two year long investigation uncovered are at risk from their abusers. Caitlin's call for help was among more than 1,000 every year here in Richland County. But we found her abuser, like many, went unpunished and without treatment. In this case, it cost them both their lives. This is a hearing on a petition for a civil protection order. Inside a Richland County courtroom. Are you Caitlin Carroll? Yes, I am. Caitlin asked for one thing. He punched me in my eye. Protection. It looks like the area around your left eye mm -hmm. has it's, some damage to it. Yeah, it's black on the top and all around here. It's protection she never got. After just three days, deputies simply gave up trying to find her abuser. And it set the stage for a tragedy. Dakota. Dakota. Two years later. Dakota, show your hands. It's early on a cold March morning. Dakota Stiegel. Not a young kid, huh? 20. Huh. Okay. Killed his ex-girlfriend. Dakota Stiegel is surrounded by police. Went to his ex-girlfriend's ex house, drugged her out from there, took her somewhere else, killed her. And a SWAT team is poised to move in. <laughs> Just hours earlier, Stiegel sped off from Caitlin's apartment, her seven-week-old baby in the back seat. Now miles away, and a chase at 100 miles an hour. We're looking for an armored vehicle that we can use to maybe make an approach to see if this guy's dead inside the car. Police have Stiegel surrounded. A robot is sent in. They were on standby for this, knowing this was going to end somewhere probably bad. At the same time, his grandmother he wouldn't stop. called to the scene praying he'll surrender. And then we we got there. They wouldn't let us go out from under the underpass. They just made us stay back there, but we could see Dakota's car going down the ramp real slow, and all of a sudden it pulled over. And then they all, including the robot, all zeroed in. And apparently he shot himself as they were coming up to him. So the next time I got to hug my grandson, he was cold and no longer here. And it all could have been stopped. It's a tragedy that claimed two lives, a young mother working nine to five in a medical office. He was always willing to help other people and put other people before herself. A young man whose life spun out of control with drugs and alcohol. Good student for the most part. Normally an AB student, very athletic, very talented. And two families searching for answers. We feel like Kate's story needs to be told. Everybody had a hand in it. Every single person had a hand in it. What we found is a trail of clues that should have stopped it. And who killed Caitlin goes far beyond pulling the trigger. 911. We think our daughter's missing. 911, what's your emergency? Okay, where would your daughter go? Go ahead. We rushed over to her house and she's not here. Hello, 911. Caitlin was just 22 years old. Then she hung up. And then she barely hung up. Her seven week old baby girl in the back seat. And Caitlin's ex boyfriend. We have a lot of history with this guy. About to make good on a promise. She was shot. 
Yeah, she's out. Okay, she's she shot her at least five times. Oh, he shot her five times. You saw him shoot her. I want everyone to see this baby girl. I want them to know that her mother could have been here. If it wouldn't have been for multiple failures of, of police agencies and people just continually looking the other way. Looking the other way, time and time again. Our investigation found the path Dakota Steagle pursued for years was as deadly as the road he traveled last March when finally striking again for the last time. So the day I die, I will carry in my heart that my baby got horrifically murdered for no reason. Caitlin's father now has custody. Stiegel committed suicide, but we found a pattern of violence allowed to continue for more than two full years. Who's trying to kill you? Caitlin first calls for help November 2014. My boyfriend trying to stab himself and he's coming down the ground trying to stab me also. Stiegel left behind his blood-soaked sweatshirt and a terrified Caitlin. What's your name, honey? Caitlin. Caitlin? Yeah. Stiegel had stabbed himself in the chest. He was committed for a mental health evaluation. Three months earlier, at the county fairgrounds, he was arrested for throwing chunks of concrete in a crowded parking lot. But Stiegel's explosive temper would surface again and again. Almost certainly. I mean, there's been many threats from Dakota on Kate's life. Caitlin's aunt remembers one of them. I'm going to make you lose your job, then I'm going to kill you, and then I'm going to kill myself and I'll be done. That's what he told her. By 2015, arrested again trying to steal wine. Then, a few months later, Stiegel explodes again in a drunken rage, punching Caitlin in the left eye. In May 2015, she files for this protection order, telling a judge, I don't feel safe. Instead, Stiegel was allowed to roam free. The warrant never served. Records show deputies made only four tries, then, gave up. Caitlin's case was dismissed. Hi, I had the police out here earlier. So just weeks later, Stiegel lashes out again for the third time. So he started pulling my hair and holding me down on the bed and hitting me. Over the next 10 months, Caitlin called 911 repeatedly. He attacked me in front of my 14 year old sister. Even her mother called. She's Tired of calling the cops because they told her if she called him again, she would get charged with uh, disorderly conduct or something. That's right. A four-time victim of domestic violence now fears police will arrest her. We're just afraid that something's going to happen. And it did. It's now January 2016. He was starting to kill her and himself. Caitlin calls 911 but hangs up. And one month later, Stiegel strikes again. He was in a domestic with his girlfriend again tonight. Caitlin has now been threatened with her life six separate times over 16 months. She had tried to get away from him. She knew they were not good for each other. Um, but at the same time, she was still trying to be a friend to him um, because he did threaten to commit suicide multiple times. Then two weeks later, Stiegel sends Caitlin a series of threatening text messages. Her uncle calls police. I have got a guy that is claiming that he is on his way to kill my mother and grandmother. Stiegel now claims he's outside. He claims that he has a gun and he is coming there to kill them. Three days later, growing increasingly unstable, Stiegel barricades himself inside his apartment. The press wants to commit suicide. But despite repeated threats and beatings, police, prosecutors, judges, and probation officers could not stop Stiegel from striking again and again until one night. Is the female still there with you? Last March. Yeah, she, she's dead. She's dead. Multiple people knew. Multiple people have seen it and they never said nothing. We're going to be bystanders to let beautiful little girls like this be raised without a mother. What kind of society are we bringing up? kind of society are we living in today? Our investigation found criminal charges against Stiegel were routinely reduced and he was continually placed 
on probation. Even more alarming, Stiegel took to social media two weeks before the murder, searching for a gun. Friends knew what he was planning, and no one stopped him. And Ron, the missed clues do not stop there. No, they don't. In fact, Stiegel should never have been on the streets on the night of the murder because just days before, he was found outside Caitlin's apartment. I can't help he's drunk or high. He looks like he's about to fall over. When Who Killed Caitlin returns. Tonight, you're watching Who Killed Caitlin, our exclusive Five on Your Side investigation into the murder of a young mother, Caitlin Carroll Peake, killed by her ex-boyfriend Dakota Stiegel before he committed suicide. Caitlin sought out a protection order, but that order was never served. But even if they are, our two-year-long investigation found that Ohio has no central registry that allows officers to determine if there are active protection orders against an abuser. And this case took another tragic twist. Stiegel was sentenced only to probation after threatening to kill both Caitlin and her grandmother. And we found it left him on the streets just days before the murder. 911, what's your emergency? A 911 call. I think it's the boyfriend. From this apartment complex. He's outside and he's like stumbling around in the backyard. Dakota Stiegel is in the backyard. I can't tell if he's drunk or high, but he can barely stand. And it's just days before Caitlin Carroll Peak was shot to death. They weren't boyfriend and girlfriend. And I think that that's what finally pushed him over the edge is he knew that she was moving on with her life. Now, just days before the murder, he spotted outside Caitlin's apartment. And he looks like he's about to fall over. He kind of looks like a zombie. So alarmed, a neighbor begs Richland County deputies for help. He's really out of it, and I'm a little concerned for his safety. Possibly on drugs, looking like a zombie, and about to fall over. But instead of arresting him, deputies allow Stiegel to go free. This is a person who had multiple threats against my daughter. Kevin Peak is my Caitlin's daughter. father. He is within feet of my daughter's house, acting strangely and possibly on drugs and not in an altered state. And you let that person stay there, you just make a report and you leave. Somebody who's repeatedly threatened that person's life. In fact, our investigation found Stiegel was on probation for threatening to kill both Caitlin and her grandmother just a year earlier. Conditions included shall not possess, use, purchase, or misuse any alcohol or illegal substance. And even more alarming, instead of being arrested, deputies wrote, spoke to his probation officer, and he is going to report in the morning for treatment. It never happened. If they'd arrested him that night, then at least we would have been aware and she would have been aware that he was outside of her house, possibly stalking her, possibly making some kind of plan to hurt her. Richland County Sheriff Steve Sheldon declined an interview to explain why. The department told us only, we are not probation officers, adding there was no offense report completed. Why didn't they take him in? Caitlin's aunt. Why didn't they arrest him? Is confused and angry. He was in trouble over and over. He threatened Kate over and over again. At what point do they consider that urgent? Probation officials also refuse to explain why Stiegel was never apprehended for violating probation and placed in treatment. You are asking for detailed information and not subject to public records. But for Caitlin's family, it's a massive failure that allowed Stiegel to remain on the street. There's no doubt in my mind that, you know, from this moment on, once he had that thing, he started enacting the plan to murder my daughter. A plan that was finally carried out just a week later. And Caitlin's family's not the only one that feels abandoned by the system. Dakota Stiegel's also says this tragedy never should have happened. Who killed Caitlin? 
Our investigation found it went far beyond just pulling the trigger, including a massive failure in a system that's supposed to protect. Caitlin Carroll Peak, like so many women here in Richland County, sought help and like so many women, didn't find it. Our investigation found that in 2016 alone, just one in five abusers accused of domestic violence were found guilty. The numbers are even worse for felonies. 40% were dismissed. Of 52 total cases, only 13 resulted in prison time. And it's not just the victims' families who feel abandoned by the system. Dakota Stegall's family members say they were failed as well. They insist they're not making excuses. Instead, they're hoping other families never face the same tragedy. I hope there's somebody out there that we can help to listen. It was her son who shot and killed Caitlin Carroll Peak after she broke off the relationship more than a year ago. We all lost a couple of very beautiful, young, bright people had a very long, good future ahead of them. And it, I believe it's due to his anger and depression. Anger and depression. The family says it's not an excuse, but instead symptoms of mental illness that were never treated. What kind of help was he given, in your view? Not much. Um, did he need help? Yes, he did, and I believe he recognized that. But it was too late. He said, Grandma, I killed Caitlin. And then committing suicide. He was in Med Central once for three days, and they let him out, and all that should have been followed up on. That's the psychiatric floor. Yes, it is. He was there three days, and they let him go. Right. On another occasion, it's where Stiegel was treated after stabbing himself with a knife. Mansell Police. And on another. Did I get somebody to do a well check on a fella? He had barricaded himself inside his apartment for hours, threatening to kill himself. It wasn't just a police call here and there. This was a long, repeated history of issues. Signs, red flags. And on still another. He claims that he has a gun. Threatened to kill both Caitlin and her grandmother. But treatment. Did he get any? Very little. Very, very little. Very little and never sustained. They kept him on the third floor for three days. Said follow up with the center. And that was that. Three days and released him. Yes. And, and I know of at least three, if not four, encounters that he was on the third floor of Med Central Hospital for mental evaluation. Same thing, three days, out the door you go. But because Stiegel was over 18, his medical treatment was confidential. I definitely think it should have been controlled more um, because once he turns 18, I'm out the picture. They don't have to tell me anything. Now his mother has both a message. And I feel horrible for Caitlin, her daughter, and their whole family. And a plea. Where's the help for somebody who needs help today, right here, right now? Where is that help? Nowhere. Nowhere. It's tragic. It's absolutely tragic. His family believes that failure allowed Stiegel to remain on the street to buy a gun and ultimately to destroy two lives. It's our commitment to all victims of domestic violence to uncover the true story behind their murders that drives our reporting at News 5. Going behind the headline, uncovering truth and encouraging change. We thank you for joining us tonight as we ask, who killed Caitlin?